we would like to introduce spherical coordinates. Now, spherical coordinates are different than cylindrical coordinates. So let's consider that I have a point in three space. Let's call it x, y, z. If I project that down onto the x, y plane, it'll become x, y, zero, with this being the z distance. If I draw from the origin to that point, then I have basically a line segment in three dimensions. Let's call that length rho. Now, you recognize rho is the symbol we use for the radius of a sphere. So this basically would be like a sphere if I went all the way around. Now, I'm going to create a rectangle in three dimensions here by drawing this line segment onto the xy plane, which we recognize is r. There's a right angle here. So if I also draw from here to here, that also represents r. So now I have a rectangle, and then I have a really simple relationship between all of the angles and all of the variables, a simple SOHCAHTOA. So let's start with the obvious, and that's that x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals rho squared, our three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem. Because we already know on the xy plane, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, this can also be written then as r squared plus z squared is rho squared. Now we have a really nice SOHCAHTOA relationship here. So now if I look at this portion right here, I know that this length is z, this length is rho, this length is r, that angle phi. So if I look at this, I can see then that r equals rho sine phi, and z equals rho cos phi. Now be mindful when you're making your thetas and your phi's that they actually come out looking different. Okay? From this and the fact that we know that x equals r cos theta, y equals r sine theta, we get a wonderful relationship by substituting back in. By replacing r with rho sine phi, I get then that x equals rho sine phi cos theta, y equals rho sine phi sine theta, and I've already got z equals rho cos phi. These are the three transformations we use then when we go from rectangular to spherical. Now, rho is the easiest of the bunch. That's just going from the center to the outer edge, much the same way that r did in polar coordinates. But what about theta and phi? Well, theta is just like before. It's on the xy plane only, so theta potentially can always range between 0 and 2 pi. Now, phi is the angle made with the z-axis to this segment, and that means that it can go from here all the way down, so phi has a potential range then of 0 to pi. Now again, theta lives on the xy plane, phi is the angle made with the z-axis, so they're completely independent of each other. Now, when evaluating a triple integral in spherical coordinates, this was my original integral in the x, y, z space, and I'm going to switch it to the spherical space. But like before, when we introduced the r in both polar and cylindrical, we have the term rho squared sine phi. Now, this is derived thoroughly in every textbook, but the on, it would take us a little while to get through that, a few more boards than I have available. So that's the compensating factor that we throw in there. So let's do a really simple example. Let's calculate the volume of a sphere of radius A centered at the origin. Now in this case here, since it's radius A, we know that rho will range between 0 and A. Phi will range between 0 and pi. Theta will range between 0 and 2 pi because there's no restrictions. So when we set up our triple integral, the volume will be the integral. In this case, we'll introduce the rho squared sine phi, because that's our only part of the integrand. Generally, we go in this order because theta is essentially always going to be constant. Phi is mostly going to be constant, but rho might be constant. Rho might be a function. So this order is the typical order we would go in. So here I'll go from 0 to a, here I'll go from 0 to pi, here I'll go from 0 to 2 pi. So our first integration is with respect to rho. So 
So I'll have one third rho cubed sine of phi evaluated from zero to a d phi d theta. So rho cubed evaluated a here, that will be an a cubed times a third. I will just go ahead and pull that constant on the outside. It'll make it a little bit easier to read. That's a d phi and a d theta. Again, making sure that those actually look different. Now, the antiderivative of sine, of course, is negative cosine. So we'll have negative a third a cubed, 0 to 2 pi, cosine of phi from 0 to pi, d theta. Now, as I evaluate that, the cosine of pi is negative 1. The cosine of 0 is 1. So this will be negative 1 minus 1, which is just negative 2. But when I multiply it by here, that makes this positive two-thirds a cubed from 0 to 2 pi d theta. Hmm. So now I'm simply integrating a constant, 1 d theta. So I multiply this quantity by the length of the interval. So it would be 2 thirds times 2 pi, which would be 4 thirds pi a cubed, which is exactly the formula you were all expecting.